we are in El Salvador, and a couple days of rest after a big week with Team 5 is what we need. So we find a beach to make camp. You gotta pull behind you too. I'd say that's a fair price. Oh. While leveling the rigs and setting up camp, our mood shifts when we are informed of some unfortunate news. The guy behind me here, they, they came up asking. Uh, they had two, two people lost at sea. They found one that, that died. They haven't found the other person yet. So um, these locals came, one of them sp speaking broken English, asked if we would help them find their other, the other person that has lost, has lost at sea or somewhere here. So um, yeah, they just don't have any equipment here to, to do any of that stuff. So they're asking for help. We, yeah, absolutely. Boy, and uh, quantos años on the 15, 15 year old boy? Pop them. Pull them, pull them in to the sea so they, they got lost and anybody knows uh, anything about it. Yeah. So one person uh, did appear this morning. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. See ya. Yeah. Apparently there were two kids out playing, two teenagers out uh, playing on the beach just a little bit into the tide, into the water. And they went missing yesterday afternoon. They found one of them this morning deceased on the beach about five or six kilometers south of here. Um, so they've asked us to keep our eyes open, probably go for a little walk and uh, just want to be very in tune to that. The family is actually staying here right now. Um, so. We're going to provide what we can and hope for the best. Many of us have kids, and this hits home. Just as we sat down, the owner of the beach comes over to welcome us. Turns out, he's a real treat. And you're all single guys? No, we're all married. Are minus, they here? Married minus, minus this guy. Sex is legal in this country. And you could drive into San Miguel and for thirty to forty dollars spend a half hour in a room with a gorgeous young <laughs> eighteen or nineteen year old girl. Um, we're on camera, but yes, I've done it over a hundred times. It's a wonderful thing, and you'd be helping out girls that are very desperate and um, like to play. So that's an option. Well, that's certainly uh, not an option. option, and more than likely, he's more than just a John. John's also pretty knowledgeable about some other questionable things. They finally came to us and they said, we want you to pay. And, I said, and who's there, like MS-13 or Los Barrios or some Whoever local has person. control of this area. Whoever is you know, in the zone. And it's all about the uh, cocaine highway. Uh, and as you remember when you were young, you know, the cocaine used to get flown right from uh, out of Colombia right into Mexico. Right. And then across the border. Cold airstrips all right. over Mexico. Right. Well, now they don't do that anymore. Yeah, now, there's no more. shut all those airstrips down. Right. They shut all those airstrips down. You know where they are? They're in Honduras. Huh. They're in Honduras. They're right over the border there. So that's why there's crime in here in Guatemala and Mexico because you're, you're talking about the largest industry in the world, $150 billion non-taxable income the cocaine industry. And so they came here and they said they wanted us to pay. And I said, well, how much is the fish cooperative paying? And the, the fish cooperative is paying $75 a month. So I said, well, I'll give you $100 a month. So they said, great. The only thing is, is we kind of don't do monthly payments anymore. We do one lump sum. And I said, well, that's just never happened. So they said, but look, we're really trying to raise money. So if you give us $500, We'll give you seven months. We'll give you two months free for an advanced payment. I go, I like these guys. So what does that mean? You know, what that means is if any punk is walking down the street and they think they're going to come over here and mess with you guys, you know, we're not going to call the police. We're going to call the bad boys. And they're not going to come asking questions. And there are no secrets in this valley. Everybody grows up to marry the girl next door. So we will find you, and you will be sorry. But I think it's great. You know, at first I was really against it, and you know, putting out fire with gasoline and doing the right thing and all that. But you know, in hindsight, I think it's uh, I think it's very cool. And they provide a service because you know the police really don't work here. Police come up to me trying to sell me turtle eggs. I go, guys, you're supposed to be the people arresting the people with turtle eggs. We go, yeah, we did arrest them, and now we're going to sell them to you. I mean. Oh. <laughs> Kind of the good thing about this guy is that he doesn't live in our country anymore. While John talked our ear off, we had another fellow land in our camp. Me? You might 
We don't know what he's on. It doesn't take a genius to know you should not hang around in these environments. What do you do? Just a pretty heavy, heavy feeling around this place right now, so I think it's best for us to move on. We're no help here. Um, we got other things to do and more places to see on our trip, so we're, we're glad to get moving. El Salvador is a beautiful place. I mean, the beach is beautiful, but it, the whole country just seems to have a weird vibe to it. And I think all of us, between being exhausted and just landing in an area where we have the owner of this place is talking about sleeping with women for money and that how it's a good thing to sleep with women for money because they need the money. Where Clay and I are coming from the, the standpoint of our wives are racing over in Morocco right as we speak, fighting to get rid of that stuff. He's what's wrong with the world. Knowing that what my wife and what Rhonda stand for, the one in four on sexual abuse and all that stuff, I could have just punched that guy in the face because of the stand that he took on his justification, his simple justification of what well, they're in need and you can help them out by doing this. So selfish. It's so wrong backwards. It's decided that we, we, we're not resting here because we're not getting any rest. We're gonna, we're gonna move on through El Salvador, get through Honduras, which is just a quick 50 mile push, and then get into Nicaragua. So we're gonna, we're gonna find some rest in Nicaragua at this point in time. Two borders stand between us and a couple days of rest. We are ready to pull out all the stops to make it happen. This time we got a fixer and uh, we met him at the gas station. He was a real cool guy. Kind of take those guys with a grain of salt, but this time seems like a real positive thing. So we're going for it. We're going to give it a try, which uh, hopefully will greatly expedite this process. It might be worth it, it may not be. He is my friend. Ronnie? Yeah, he living here. I go, I go in the bank. Hey, I need to sign. Hey, uh, this paper is for... That's, uh, get on. that's Kyle's. It's right Kyle, here. Kyle. See? See? Kyle. This is great. I don't want to get too excited yet because we might get uh, held up later on in the line here, but we're moving fast to this. It's awesome. You'll be surprised from what a few cigarettes, a lighter, some gum, and playing cards can get you in places like this. Honduras is the starting point of what is called the cocaine highway. And cocaine is actually flown in on remote airstrips uh, into Honduras, and then it's eventually smuggled up into Mexico, uh, where it finds its way into the cartels. Some of our other sources also tell us that um, uh, to be really careful that there's heightened activity in the area. So uh, we are just trying to be a fast mover and get through this area as fast as possible. After traveling a longer distance than normal within a no man's land, we come up to the Honduran border. Who is that guy? <laughs> Jeffrey. Yes, sir. El Andoni. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> and you got it all uh, here. Okay, park up here. Hey, creepy. See you later, creepy. No, no. That's creepy. That is Bunch of really kids creepy. Wanting money. It's amazing how you can just go across a line and experience a totally different place. I, I, I can't wait to get through this side of the border. This this place is a little weird. It's kind of voodoo-ish. We're going through the immigration process, jumping through hoops. We're out of El Salvador and we're in step one of getting into Honduras. We got to do our, uh, migra our visas to get in here for our persons. Then we got to get the vehicles in here. Then we got to get fumigated and then we're on our way. So we got a couple helpers that we enlisted because they are quite helpful. It's worth it to pay them five bucks each because they're standing in line for us and holding our hands to each of the checkpoints. So it just makes the process faster. So things are going good. Our fixer had a helper waiting in line allowing us to get in and take his place. It expedited our border time exponentially. Crazy. 
awesome. So tons of people are traveling right now. And with already talking to Ronnie earlier, he said that this is a, a pretty big border for the cocaine smuggling across. So that's also why we have to keep our heads on straight and it just makes it more of an interesting border to cross. If anyone ever tells you that borders aren't stressful, they're lying to you. Yeah, sure, it's all a big game, but it's a stressful one. So I was just walking back from over there, Colin and I, and a guy brushed up against my side, but I had my hand down by my front pocket, and he was he was trying to go in my pocket. I mean, he was trying to pickpocket me, so <laughs> I just brushed him off and uh, just kept walking and didn't stop. Your so. face was like, hey, like what? <laughs> yeah. They're oh, good. Well, it's going to happen. They're you good. just got to be prepared for yeah. it. we got to keep our hands in our pockets like all the time. Let's see if you catch the pickpocket this time. I just got yelled at for having a camera in the border. I didn't see like 10 guards yelling at me. So now I'm gonna start with this little camera and do it anyways. That guy said it's 11.35. We've got 25 minutes to get through this whole process or we spend another hour here watching them eat lunch and then finish. So let's just be hasty about it. Make sure we're making all the right moves and ready to go when these guys give us you don't want to spend any more time than necessary in a no man's land. If something goes down while in this zone, you're literally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, the guard didn't like our camera at all. So he said, I will hold you up for a long time unless you something. Really? Outside, we sort out the deal with our fixer. Yeah. It's the classic negotiation that starts out at 100 bucks and lands at 15. I saw the line. It was a big line. I agree. I'm not denying it was a big oh, line. No. What do you feel? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Still okay. okay. All right. Good work, everybody. That was just about two hours and 20 minutes to cross two international borders in a border that we expected to take three hours minimum. So we're already got a little equity there. We learned a valuable lesson that some of these uh, helpers can be actual good help too. So that cost us 15 bucks for them. So I think it was money well spent. I tell you what, I didn't want to spend another hour waiting in line. So to me, it was worth it. And oh, FJ45 on the right. <laughs> Gotta love it. Over. As we move through this short section of Honduras, the girls of Expedition Overland are across the world in Northern Africa in the beautiful country of Morocco. We just got off the plane! We're in Morocco! <laughs> Rhonda and Rochelle are preparing to start the event known as the Rally Asia des Gazelles. This is their second time competing together, and they are here to win. So we're in Rabat, Morocco, at the official ceremonial start of the 25th annual Rally Asia des Gazelles. And it's freezing. The Rally Asia des Gazelles is a all-women's off-road rally. It's the hardest, longest all-female rally in the world. And it's by dead reckoning navigation only, which means you only have a map and a compass, no GPS, no electronics of any kind. You actually have to turn those in at the beginning of the rally. So there's six egg checkpoints a day over a period of nine days, and we work our way west through Morocco. It's a really cool way to see the country. Yeah. And we end up in Essaouira, where we get to parade on the beach at the end. It's really cool, awesome yeah. event. Yeah. <laughs> okay. he's not French. <laughs> When Rochelle gets interviewed by a French cameraman, she speaks caveman. It's I so think I funny. Just speak She's like, we go to the places and we get these checkpoints. <laughs> At the ceremonial start, the girls meet up with many of the American teams, including Team Hoenn, friends made during last year's competition. Want to say hey? Hey! Hi. How you doing? Good! Good. Ready to get this party started? Yeah! Party started. USA! USA! The environment is one of the bigger challenges in this rally, and it doesn't wait long to start dishing it out. We are climbing to the top of the Atlas Mountains, which is what we have to go through to get to the other side, to our food. Welcome to Africa. 
we have this little Renault uh, Kangoo van that probably only has two wheel drive. Mm -hmm. They can barely make it up and we're stuck behind them for a long, long ways. Shelly, how do you feel about this? I am not choosing Joy right now. <laughs> She's not choosing Joy, and so I'll choose it for us. <laughs> My driver's getting angry. Ah. Hey ladies! What's going on? Oh, We're in Africa! It's all okay, get back in. You're in the truck. So, I left Montana to go to the desert for some warm weather. <laughs> I'm this is what we're driving through right now. The rally has several categories, quads and bikes, crossovers, and four-wheel drives. The XLs are competing in the four-wheel drive category. For the next nine days, the girls will be looking to drive the straightest lines possible between checkpoint flags hidden in the Sahara. This is a rally around precision, not speed. The fewer kilometers traveled over the course of the rally, the higher the ranking. All maps of Wally. Okay. And the uh, road book of Prologue. Okay. okay. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Au revoir. You win this rally through perfect execution of map reading, holding a heading, and driving the straightest line possible. A perfect balance between driver and navigator. Oh. And don't break down or get lost, because you'll be removed from the rankings when you call for assistance. I, w I like to hike this with Rhonda, so I can get a visual of what I'm about to drive. All day. Wow, I better shave. <laughs> get ready, it's gonna be a long day. Yeah. Okay, so here's where we are. Okay. And we have to get here. So we're going on the left side of that peak? The right, the other side of that big peak right here? Yeah. Other side of it, the right. Oh, got it. That's the seating. Okay. Rochelle is showing good confidence in her driving, and here she demonstrates the perfect way to crest a dune, keeping enough momentum to get to the top without getting high centered. The girls are performing really well. Their previous experience in the rally is paying off. But they were saying you did get hopelessly lost like one year. Last year. Was that last year? Yes. Yeah, day three, really bad. So is that like... We're actually big, big. going to be tackling that beast uh, today, those mountains. I'm a new person this year, because they actually know how to navigate. <laughs> Once you get lost that bad, you learn the skills to not do that again. Never ever do it again. It was super scary. We thought we were gonna sleep out in these mountains with no one around us and a bunch of nomadic people that would, they like to like, you know, crowd around. And that worked. So, <laughs> see, she's allergic yeah. to the helmet. Yeah. Don't poke it. Looks I like know you've it was got point. like bot fly or something. <laughs> We've got um, eight checkpoints to do today. Uh, we're on a marathon leg. The oil light kept coming on, so I checked it and found out I had almost no oil in the track. So. Filled her up with oil, put some fuel treatment in there, bandaged my face, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> New challenges lay before them. Their good fortune, though, appears to be dipping south. We're only in the middle of nowhere in the desert, and you get backed into. 
20, almost exactly the same distance we just did. Okay, and it's looking a little more aggressive. <laughs> we were just driving and then we heard the thong, and it wasn't as aggressive as the first time we heard that sound, but then we looked under here and the coil snapped. This checkpoint really sucks. I hated this checkpoint. I hated it too. It was terrible. Um, I'm just going to keep driving careful on it and um, see what the mechanics say when I get back. So I, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. <sighs> if the coil fails completely and they need to call for assistance, the girls will be disqualified. Five more days and hundreds of kilometers of unforgiving terrain still await. We have met a gentleman named Marvin. So uh, we're going to see uh, what he can do to help us out here. Can you hot mic for us right here? Our new fixer, recommended to us by our last guy, isn't proving to be so effective. In fact, he's more or less a nuisance. Sharp boys, and keep your eyes on all our goodies here. Roll up windows. Okay, passport. I'll get to my passport. Un momento. I'll punch your throat. <laughs> Seriously. I'll go with me. Get this photocopy, bring it back, hand off a copy, then go take our papers, and that proves that we checked our vehicles out of Honduras, and then we go down and register back into Nicaragua. So, last border took us uh, two hours and 15 minutes. We'll see how long this one takes us. So, he's not sure if it's because he was in Africa or not, but um, we need our yellow fever shots vaccinations, and I didn't, wasn't told to get that. So. I have uh, typhoid, tetanus, hepatitis A. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna borrow uh, I got Scott's paper because it doesn't have a name on it, no identifying name on it. So I am I'm now current on shots I've never even got. It's the first time we've had to provide a medical document to get out of a country. Just handing in our yellow fever. Some of us have. Them. Some of us. Don't. Don't. So, I just, we'll see. No. So, I just borrowed Scott's extra copy, which didn't have his name on it, and uh, the guy didn't notice, so we'll see if Scott gets through with the same paper. Yeah. Toby, you got in without with a copy, and then he flagged me on a copy and wanted the original. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the same piece on the of paper. same piece of paper. So you, you got lucky. <laughs> That's how you do it, man. You just gotta, I don't know if lie is the word. Yeah, it is, that's the word. I think I threw a wrench in the system because everybody else gave him a copy and then all of a sudden I threw in my original because I didn't have a copy. Yeah, and, and then, then he probably said, Hey, wait a minute. These, these aren't these, these aren't are, originals. These aren't originals. Go get your original. Yeah. So I think it's because I had my original that threw a wrench in the system. So. Well, I had the original and it worked. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and now if I get yellow fever, it's, it's because <laughs> I'm not Scott. A problem none of us have planned for comes in from left field. A new fumigation technique comes into play. Oh my god. You must to get out of the vehicle. Oh, are you spraying inside? Yeah. Um, new. New. Brand new. Brand new. Yeah. I do everything short of beg to be omitted as our vehicles are brand new. Brand new, 2015 Toyota. <laughs> don't, don't, don't spray that in my car. No, senor, please. Just okay. With a patch and a sticker, I'm able to get the gentleman to reduce the amount he sprays in the rigs. It's better than nothing. See, uh, you got it? Okay. At least it's better than the full dose others are getting. You can taste 
taste it. You can taste it. That's like a year off your life yeah. right there. I don't need to. You gotta get in the car. I just went to try and sit in the car and about, I about fell over. <laughs> yeah. Just as we think we are in the clear, it all goes wrong. See, see.